Hello, my name is Dr. Anthony Basil. I'm the Learning Assurance Project Manager from Queen Mary University in London. And uh, I'm here to talk a little bit about towards next generation webinar design. But I just won't be talking about it. We'll be getting you involved as well. So before you began to look through this presentation, there are some prerequisites that you should have done. Um, first of all, you need to have uh, internet access, of course, a good smartphone, um, QR code scanner software in the smartphone, um, data protection consent, um, all the participants involved are giving permission to record this event. Um, you need to be able to have access to my website, which is abasil.wordpress.com, elearning-r-d. Now, we're going to be reviewing um, a, 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 the discussion about virtual knowledge on that uh, website. And so what we're going to ask you to do is to scroll down to the discussion board and enter your views on the same website, abasil.wordpress.com, but for augmented reality. So please make sure you do that before you carry on to see the rest of the video. Now, the video is going to be actually broken into two parts so because of the time, so that you have a smaller file to download and, and also because there are two sections of the talk. The first part will be an introduction activity where uh, we'll be following up with uh, forming a common um, instructional design language. And then we'll be all, also talking a little bit about gamification. Part two, we'll be focusing on webinar designs. And then you'll get a taste of next generation webinar designs, which I'm calling the immersive 360 degree fishbowl webinar uh, model. And I'll give you a taste of my Flatpak webinar toolkit checklist. So get ready for some fun. Right. Now, instead of me talking about my introduction, I'm going to give you an introduction activity. My name is Dr. Anthony Skip Basil, and I'm going to give you three minutes from now to find as many relevant facts about me to, that you would support why am I qualified to do this webinar. You're going to get one mark, one point for each fact that's true. That means you need to be able to prove where you got it from and why I'm the appropriate speaker for the conference. You should be able to provide the web address where you got that information from. Okay, we're going to say stop the video now, and then once your three minutes have been up and you found some facts, you can compare. Ready? Stop the video now. Great. Welcome back to the introduction activity. And um, as you can see with the task, we gave you three minutes to do a search on me, the presenter, to find some facts about why I should be presenting. And the, the reason that we did this approach is because we want you to be active participants. We want you to be a participant researchers. Um, when you're involved in a webinar, not just sitting passively. So hopefully you've written down some things and made some notes. If you said that I would be a good presenter for this conference because I've got a doctorate in learning technology design, give yourself a mark. Um, Adobe International Education Leader, anyone? Get a mark for that. How about uh, over 55 international publications, including Teaching and Learning Online from Rutledge Press? You get a mark on that one. I've been a keynote speaker on several international conferences. 
give yourself a mark. And how about national recognition uh, for blended learning curriculum innovation from the Higher Education Academy? Again, you get a mark if you get that. So total it up, and then if you like, you can send me an email, and I'll let you know where you are in our leaderboard. Okay, here we go. We're going to now get into the area of forming a common instructional design language. So in this case, we're saying, what is your understanding of knowledge in your personal professional context? So there's a pre-activity that's in the abasil wordpress.com augmented reality website. And there we're looking at the term epistemology. Okay, what is that? Is virtual knowledge different than analog meaning making? And can we have a telepistemology? We're going to say, just like before, stop the video now, go in, have a think about it, put some comments in the discussion board. There's some from previous talks uh, that we've done, and you might want to read through those comments as well. And then you can rejoin me for the next part of this video. Great. Okay. Well, I hope that was interesting. Welcome back. We're now talking about forming a common instructional design language. And we've got a little matrix here to look at some of the elements of that. So what is your understanding of knowledge in a personal professional context? Well, part of it is that we'll look at the elements of an epistemology model. And then its importance over time. So you can see here in this uh, diagram, this matrix, what we've got is we've, we've got the, the, the top left section starts out really big and then gets smaller while the bottom right section starts off small and gets bigger over time. So what are some of the elements? Let's have a look. To start off with, is knowledge a product? Is knowledge something which is abstract? Is knowledge a skill? This is often an interesting debate with higher education. Is knowledge a fact? So these are all various components that can be part of defining the term knowledge. Well, it may start on the left side of this matrix as a, a large element as a product but then over time you can see that it shifts into becoming more of a process knowledge may start out as an abstract theory or model but then become an applied knowledge a tacit knowledge something that is used and put in practice a skill can shift from being something that we do to something that we understand and then the application of that understanding. The facts that may be a yes or no can change over time and become what I refer to in my research as fuzzy facts. So they're not just yes or no, but maybe something in the middle, something dependent upon the information that's available at the time. Now, in the next section, gamification, we're looking at trying to get the participants in the webinar to be active. So uh, there are a lot of good tools out there that we'll talk about later, and conventional, conventional <laughs> webinar activities are things like voting, polling the, the, the participants, getting the stakeholders to do a survey. You might want to do that in the beginning to get a profile of them. You might want to get uh, involved a little bit later 
um, while you're doing your presentation or you're running your, your webinar. But we're, we're, we're also talking about online quizzes and Google Forms as a possible resource. And of course, you have your text chats. In this particular webinar, because it's a recording, we don't have anything going on, but you can see in the bottom right corner for this Adobe Connect environment, we do have live text chat that could be used. How about unconventional, unconventional <laughs> webinar activities? Well, instead of giving the quiz generated by the tutor, you can get the students to actually make the quiz questions. They have to then come up with the answers and provide feedback. Text chats can be used to actually generate frequently asked questions. And you can take the text from those text chats and convert them into tag clouds. I really like simulations. And so have a look at GoVenture World because they've got a good simulation that's uh, uh, free and you might be able to mil build that into your model. Augmented reality is fantastic, but we'll be looking at something we call QR code treasure hunts. So let's finish off our gamification with an activity where you are going to be using your mobile phone that we said in the prerequisites, ready with your QR scanner. We're going to use the phone to scan this code that you can see on the, the, the video right now. You may want to pause the video in a moment so that you can scan that code. Then we want you to go to the web page to get some more information to take you to the next stage of this learning event. So pause the video, scan the code, and do the activity. Great, welcome back. We're now looking at the QR code treasure hunt. So what did you find? There are a variety of engaging media that can be used to, to prompt stakeholders to create their own knowledge. Um, one of my favorite authors is Marshall McLuhan. Um, where he says, the medium is the message. Have a look at this YouTube video. Very inspiring. So QR codes, what are they all about? You can use free generators uh, that are online to make uh, your own QR code and, and design your, your own activity with them. Um, some of them are free and some of them you have to pay for. But if you have uh, Microsoft Office, uh, the, the 365 Office uh, resources, and you've got forms, you can generate the QR code. That's the picture there. Um, and it, right from that. And then, and then you've got a permanent free uh, 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 form that you're going to be able to make interactive with your learning design. So let's take a look at, at the application of this in, in a real world setting. Um, alternative reality game theory is something that I'd, I'd like you to take a look at. There's a nice link there for a, a, a YouTube video, um, but you, you may have heard of things like Pokemon, where you take your mobile phone and you're going around in the real world and you're interacting with the game. Well. Let's look at this example. Fire safety. All right. Have you ever done a fire safety training course? Most of us that work in businesses that are that are fairly good size, you know, would have to do some kind of fire safety training where you just read the text, do the quiz, carry and repeat. Okay. But does does that actually help you to, to know what to do in a real fire? Um, why not make the learning a real world experience? Put a QR code onto the fire extinguisher in the course, tell them to go and find it, scan the QR code, 
and see if they can answer any questions that you've put on the QR code. This is a great way in a, in a real world situation. I'd want to know that the person I'm, that I'm working with knows where the fire exits are or the fire extinguishers. So we're going to pause here, stop the video, and then we're going to ask you to get ready to do part two of the video where we're talking a little bit about web design. See you in a minute.